Rise up, rise up, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, kings and queens, friends, frenemies, and you agents. It's Brother Marley, and this is the Gambia One channel. Welcome to the Gambia. This is the Gambia. It's a donkey. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I'm trying to say. But you know what? The reason why I'm talking about this whole Mark Curry episode. So Mark Curry of hanging with Mr. Cooper fame. For those of us uh, watching him on TV when we finished college, when we finished sixth form, when we finished school, that man's been entertaining millions of, if not billions of people around the world. And now Mr. Cooper is being racially profiled by the head of security and maintenance man. So there's a few things that were bugging me about this video. So the first thing was, this gentleman comes up to Mark Cooper. Now, I remember when I met John Amici. John Amici. He's a uh, an ex-basketball player. He used to play uh, college football, fo sorry, college basketball back in the U USA. He was from he was from the U UK and he played in the USA college basketball. He never played in the NBA, I don't believe. But he played for France, he played in Italy and some other countries like that. Um, but I remember this man was just, he's just a huge, he just takes up a lot of space, he's huge, you can't miss him, you can't miss him. So, I relate, so there's that, and I remember seeing that video, that, um, that documentary on Netflix, about the, um, the time when those basketball players all decided to, uh, break bad because the, the the crowd was carried on crazy and so they were beating up these uh, basketball fans like it looked like a looked like giants crushing ants. Um, I see this. I see this happening. We have so. When I'm watching the video and I see this, this older gentleman come up and have the gall to ask this man, is he, does he actually, is he actually staying at the hotel? Like questioning him. And then when Mark says, well, who are you? He says, well, I'm head of security. And it turns out that's a lie. He's just the man who fixes the toilets. But he's so flipping emboldened that he could just come up and talk to this man and ask, start questioning him, questioning him. Where do you get so much kahunas from? How? How is that even possible? That's the first thing. The second thing is the young lady behind the uh, checking desk. She asks him, are, so are you a guest here? So Mark Curry says, well, are you not the one that checked me in? Now there is no way on God's green earth that she forgot him within the, between the time he checked in and when he was there chilling in the, in the, in the uh, lobby. Because the man is a, is a walking giant. He's a walking black giant in your white hotel in white Colorado. You recognize him. Don't ask dumb questions. You see, people will think that I'm crazy because I speak about this thing called white supremacy. And white supremacy doesn't mean that white people are supreme over everything or everybody else. It's just a belief that many of them have, not all, many of them have, and will stick up for each other to keep that in place, even if it makes no sense. So even if you're, you're making a maintenance manager pretending that he's security, And he has the right to go and start talking to people and asking them where, you know, why are you sitting there? Like, like these are anti-vagrancy laws, like we're in Jim Crow South or something. I don't know how that comes about. But she then plays dumb and is like, uh, do you actually, do you actually belong here in the hotel? You done know, you know he's already been in the hotel because you checked him in. The third thing that bothered me was 
the young man of colour who is in the video. He starts chuckling, chuckling, saying, Are you playing the race card? Now, not so long ago, I was at a bar up the road here. This European man is telling me about how he's been out and he keeps being stopped by the police and they keep checking his papers because he's white. Now, he's been here experiencing this discrimination for the last couple months and he's already sick of it. Imagine if this is generation upon generation. Imagine if it has gone from your family members being lynched to the point of microaggressions, to people asking if you belong there, to people laughing at your response to being, um, being questioned for not a good reason, for no good reason. If you look in the background of that, of that video that he did, the place is empty. They should be glad there's a man in the lobby just to give the place some kind of, some kind of life. They should be happy he's in the lobby. But no, the place is empty and so they're like, let's stop what we're doing. The broken toilets can fix themselves for a minute. Let me pretend that I'm now not security, head of security and I'll now question him and we'll make his day bad <sighs> you know I've been here for a, a while now in the Gambia and the Gambia is not perfect as you can see I'm on a side road here uh, the road is just a sand road there's a pile of sand here things are not done very competently here but I don't have to deal with every Tom, Dick and Harry thinking that they can lord over, the, over me their complexion I haven't experienced that in no lie I kind of experienced it a few months ago someone trying to tell me nonsense in a, in a bar but he was completely powerless so it didn't really ma mean anything with this in incident the man that was talking to Mark Curry he was powerless but then he said he's head of security to try and evoke some kind of power obviously we saw right through that and obviously that got debunked by his, uh, his workmate he was like no, he's a maintenance man. So, other than that fool a few months ago trying to talk to me like as though I'm one of his boys, I haven't experienced um, that kind of that kind of thing where someone will try and talk down to you simply because of what your skin looks like versus what their skin looks like. I haven't experienced that in a long time. And it's peaceful, you know, it's good. It's good not experiencing that. I felt it for him because when he was chatting to the phone saying like, how he felt about it. I could feel his um, frustration, I could feel his anger. I recalled those feelings from, uh, you know, myself when I experienced similar things back in London. But I don't experience it, experience it anymore. So, If you want to come over to Gambia, 
if you want to travel to Africa and see what's what over here, see what's going on, even if you want to use Gambia as a base and then move on to other places, try it out because it's weird, you know, with like all this uh, nature, like the, the trees and the donkey who's gone past and uh, the palm tree and the mango trees across the road. When you don't have the, the, the police and government workers and teachers and the maintenance man trying to talk to you like as though you're below them. When you don't have to deal with that, life gets a whole lot more serene, a whole lot more chilled out. Now, for my cousins over there in the, in the United States, you have a whole, I us the, the brothers and sisters I speak to over here from the States, when they tell me about how it feels knowing that you're in a family with, say, four boys, and you're, you worry about your brothers as to whether one of them are gonna get shot by the police. I mean, these are people who are paid to protect and serve you. These are people who are representatives of the state. And that you have to be scared or worried about the state ambushing you and, and killing you. It's bad enough just crime in general, you know? But, you know, you keep yourself safe, you go out during the daylight hours, whatever, whatever. You, you know which roads are safer roads, which roads are not safer roads. That's bad enough, but when you have people who, who, are, have the, who have a badge, who are sanctioned with um, deciding whether you live or die, nah, that next level of, 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 of angst must affect you psychologically. It must do. It must, it has to. It may not feel like it, but it must, surely. Just logically, it must do. Look, do yourself a favor and come out of that system, please. This is your brother Mali from the Gambia. Later.